Episode 201, No Way Out. Especially since Rachel had been the one leading throughout the whole match, when they looked at her with enthusiasm and burning passion, she felt the heat and the pressure as though she was teetering on the edge of a walk with boiling hot oil. She lowered her gaze and looked at her right hand. That numbing sensation was getting worse and even the slight trembling was becoming a lot more obvious. Hang in there. Rachel Alley, you have to hang in there. Perseverance will bring success. Rachel took a deep breath and cheered herself. But even then, by the time they won the second round, her right hand was already shaking uncontrollably. She frowned. She knew that her condition was getting serious. Her right hand had never fully recovered. She had never been able to play for more than half an hour at a time. The last match had left her feeling quite exhausted, and this week, she had not had enough time to rest and recover. So now, this situation... Rachel bit her lip. Looking at the team members, all excited and in high spirits, she stood up and placed her fingers in her long sleeves. She mumbled, I'm going to the restroom. In the restroom. Rachel extended her right hand. It was shaking involuntarily. She tried hard to control it without success. There was no way she could continue to play like this. Her heart sank and a sense of depression appeared. Angrily, she slammed her fist against the countertop. And at this point, the restroom door was swung open and someone walked in. It was Purple Fairy. There was a look of happy surprise on her face as her gaze fell on Rachel's hand. No wonder that you've never played a match, even though you're sweet Rachel. There's something wrong with your hand. <laughs> this time, gang team will come in first for sure. Rachel quickly hid her hand behind her. She frowned at Purple Fairy's words. Purple Fairy, even if my hands are crippled, it is easy for me to crush you guys. Purple Fairy sneered. Let's wait and see then. Both of them walked out of the restroom. Purple Fairy quickly returned to the venue and found the team captain. When you play later, everyone, focus on attacking Emma. When Rachel returned to her team, she saw that the team members were all rubbing their fists and getting ready for the action. Coach Rachel, it's time for us to take revenge. Now is the chance for us to avenge what she had done to us. Looking at the team, Rachel suddenly felt dismayed. She knew that she wouldn't be able to hold out much longer. The match started. This time, Rachel Alley chose a champion that wasn't too difficult to maneuver. But the moment the fight started, she came up against difficulties she had never experienced before. As though they had agreed on this beforehand, the opposing players took turns attacking her. She had to focus fiercely and hold her breath, continuously maneuvering her champion in order to stay alive. But such intense playing was wearing her hand out until during an important group battle, her right hand suddenly lost control to the extent that she could not even hold the mouse. There was no way she could keep playing. Before she could even execute her ultimate attack, she was killed. And then, with five enemy players against their four, CQ team was entirely wiped out. Chris and the rest were stupefied. Everyone stared at the screen in disbelief. They turned to look at Rachel and saw that her right hand was damaged. It was shaking uncontrollably, unable to even hold the mouse. Coach, your hand! Rachel looked at her own hand. Her face was ashen. She bit her lip and shouted, Once more. Chris and the others suddenly understood what she meant and also understood why. Even though she was sweet Rachel, she had never played alongside them during their training sessions. Their eyes reddened as they looked back at their screens. Chris's voice was hoarse and almost choking with emotion. Coach Rachel, stay strong. Even if we lose this game, we'll do so with honor. CQ team had come a long way and it hadn't been easy. 
Although their team had been established two months ago, from the time Zombie Leader had led the team to fight in their first match, they had been up against one mishap after another. Purple Fairy's meddling, a team member's family troubles, the Godfather and the Deputy Godfather getting injured. All of those drove them to strongly feel like this was a competition they had to win. They also felt that they would win for sure. It was as though under the leadership of such a central figure like Sweet Rachel, success was something inevitable. To the extent that they played this match, even when Rachel had started to make errors, even when she was killed by the opponents, it all felt normal. But when they saw her hand, when they had discovered her eyes were becoming bloodshot, it was only then that they realized in a flash that success was a lot farther away than they had thought. Chris's voice choked for a bit, causing the eyes of the godfather and the deputy godfather, who hadn't even made a noise when their hands were scolded, to uncontrollably turn red. They were not mourning the fact that they could not win this game. They were feeling sad for Rachel. Once sweet Rachel, that sweet Rachel who had rocked the gaming world, the sweet Rachel had lived in their memories as a legend in the gaming world, that exemplary model of the gaming world. Her hand was injured and she could never play again. It was as though a fighting master was being stripped of her exponential martial arts. That sharp pain in their hearts, they could not help but lament. The sorrow they felt for sweet Rachel was hard to bear. They looked at her again. They saw that her hand could no longer hold down the mouse. She willed with all her might for her hand to grab it, but it would not stop shaking and would not carry out that one simple instruction. At this point, Rachel said, Resurrected. They looked at their screens. Rachel shouted, Continue the battle. She gulped. This round depends on you guys. The live audience was now silent. And in the room, only Rachel's directions could be heard. Zombie leader, you fight the front line. The godfather, you fight the enemy's back lines. The deputy godfather, defend our back lines. Peerless, look after the formation. Now I'll initiate the attack. You guys follow. I'll take the blows and you fight. Don't try to rescue me. It's okay if I get killed. I'll trick them into using their ultimate attack. This round, I'm not critical. I'm just a bait. The most important thing is that you guys stay alive. Attack. As the instructions came, the team members tried to follow and coordinate, maneuvering together. The situation of the battle was deeply worrying. CQ team was clearly disadvantaged. With one critical player down and all of them being professional gamers, it made a big difference. But the CQ team members had an impatient look on their faces. They all knew that it was no longer important whether they won or lost the match. The most important thing was that they had given their best. Even if they went down, they would do it with their heads held high. In the past, losing a game was just that, losing. But now they had finally realized the meaning of those words. They were not sad, they were proud of themselves. CQ's team protection tower was destroyed, and King Team wanted to take this opportunity to win the last match. But at this point, CQ Team demonstrated their perseverance and patience. King Team had made three separate attacks to CQ Team's central tower, but they had not been successful. Generally, a game would last for around 20 minutes but this match had kept going for 40 minutes already. The commentator was at the brink of losing his voice because of the shouting. A few times, the enemy team had killed one of the CQ team's champions and had almost won the game. But in the end, 
it would be thwarted by a CQ player. This happened a few times, and the commentator would be so excited that he stood up. My God, this match has been going on for 45 minutes. This is the Cliff of Love, Washington, D.C. competition venue, and we're in the midst of the longest game ever. There has not been another game that has lasted this long. Let's take a look at the data. King Team has got 50,000 more coins than CQ Team. CQ had actually resisted four waves of full attack from King under such a strong lack of gold. King Team is indeed the leading team, but I have to say, in comparison, I am more impressed by CQ's fighting spirit and tenacity. Now, King is launching another wave of attack. This time, CQ may not be able to take the blow. Let's cheer for CQ. The match ignited the audience. Those who had been initially supporting P were now touched by CQ fighting team spirit. One by one, they started to cheer for CQ. Even King's fans were moved by CQ. Even though they were holding up place cards supporting King Team, they started to cheer, Come on, CQ! You can do it, CQ! Rachel stared intently at the competition screen and shouted, Zombie leader, you can hide behind the central tower and deploy from there. The Godfather, charge! The Deputy Godfather, break the troop line! A horrifying slaughtering. Zombie Leader made himself useful in this group battle. The commentator was talking at the top of his voice, almost hoarse from shouting. What an explosive delivery from Zombie Leader with this group battle. They actually evened the score, both teams wiping out each other completely. They managed to resist. CQ team has resisted yet another wave of attack. They are peerless. I am in all. However, unfortunately, now the minions have arrived and no one in CQ has resurrected. No one in King team has resurrected either. Finally, congratulations to King team. It's the minions that have destroyed the central tower. You've won the first round. Let's take a break. And in 10 minutes, the second round will commence. There was a sudden buzz. The live audience was fired up all at once. Purple Fairy was completely nerve-wracked by watching that game. But now that King had won, she heaved a sigh of relief. She looked sinisterly at the opposite room, her palm clammy with perspiration. In the final group battle, if there had even been one CQ team member alive, it could have turned the situation around. And now, they had finally won. As she thought about this, she suddenly heard the fans stand up. And no matter if they were holding up King Team placards or P Team placards, and even those with C Team placards, all of these thousands of fans were now unanimously shouting in unison, CQ! CQ! Some of the CQ fans had even started crying. They shouted, Go on, CQ. CQ, we love you. You are the champions in our hearts. Purple Fairy clenched her fist tightly when she heard these. She bit her lip. This was unbelievable. What right did they have? Obviously, King Team had won the round, but CQ had won the support of all the audience? She looked at Henry, who was sitting next to her, and saw that he too was somewhat consumed by the scenario. Then, looking in the direction of the CQ fighting team, he asked, Say, how much do you think it would cost to buy CQ team? Episode 202, Giving Up. Purple Fairy kept silent. She could not disapprove more of his new idea. Biting her lip and smiling bitterly, she said, Mr. Carter, 
I need to go to the restroom. Henry nodded. With a gloomy expression, she left the event venue and headed backstage. Rachel's hand was in pain by now, and it would not stop trembling. Not even when she held her trembling hand with her other hand. Chris looked at her with concern. Are you still able to play? Rachel gritted her teeth and nodded. Even if her hand was crippled, she would not abandon the fight. The godfather and the deputy godfather hung their heads and sighed. In that final group battle, if I had been faster to dodge their ultimate attack, we may have had a chance to turn the situation around. It was my fault for not having protected you. Actually, it was my fault. In my nervousness, I stood too much to the front. They all looked humble, completely unlike how some other teams would react after losing a fight. They weren't the slightest bit exasperated or flustered. Rachel looked at them and she suddenly laughed. She was so proud of this competitive team. As they talked, the room door suddenly burst open. Purple Fairy stood at the doorway, staring at all of them. I say the CQ team shown off enough. It was obvious that you were losing, yet you have to put on such a disgusting act. Let me tell you this, even if you attract more fans for yourselves, Winners will be winners, and losers will be losers. After falling out with Zombie Leader, Purple Fairy had been less and less cordial, and increasingly not caring about their opinion. Rachel narrowed her eyes after Purple Fairy spoke. Their team had fought hard and had taken the competition seriously, but to her, it was all a staged act? This Purple Fairy... This is CQ's team's lounge. Please leave. Rachel icily ordered her to leave. Purple Fairy squinted her eyes. My advice to you would be just to give up the second round and not waste everyone's time. Rachel replied, In a competition, there exists only one scenario for us. As long as the tower stands, the team will stand and fight. Giving up is not a term found in our dictionary. Purple Fairy stamped her foot angrily and raised a finger to point at Rachel. Great, this is great. Then let's see you continue to fight with your crippled hand. She glared at everyone in the room, in turn, and then left in a huff. After she left, the team members in the room began to feel their blood boil. This Purple Fairy is getting to be too much. Look at her arrogance. I'd like to win this competition just so that it feels like a slap to her face. Let's put in our best effort. Yes. The second round of the match began. The team that won two out of the three rounds would be the winner. This meant that if CQ lost this round, then King Fighting Team would emerge as the champion of this competition. Rachel Alley focused, gritted her teeth, and chose the champion at which she was an expert. When she selected this character, the entire fighting team was stirred up for a moment. Sweet Rachel was famed for playing in this character. And the champion was difficult to maneuver. For that reason, Rachel Alley had hardly used this champion in the first few rounds. Now, Sweet Rachel, who had disappeared for the last eight years, finally made an appearance it felt as though an elusive fighting master had resurfaced. The godfather and the deputy godfather had not fully recovered from their injuries and were unable to play their best. Rachel could only place her remaining stakes on her champion. If she took this gamble and her hand held up, then the team could win. If she could not hold up, then she would be exposed to the opponent's attacks and the team would lose the match. Chris looked at her and asked, Coach, can you make it? Rachel cast her gaze down and said, Yes, I can. The second round of the match began. After a 10 minute break, Rachel felt that her hand was much better. Now that she had the champion, 
she was an expert in. Perhaps she could make a good use of it this round. Within the first two minutes of the match, she indeed played quite well. Although she was no longer as nimble and fluid as before, at least she made no errors. Time passed, second by second, and minute by minute. Rachel's attention was fully focused on the game. Zombie leader, use the displacement spell and take a look if there's anyone hiding in the bushes. Chris immediately did as he was told and answered, four of them, fight them. Rachel gave a shout and dashed over to the foliage. The Godfather, the Deputy Godfather, and Peerless, all three of them followed closely behind. Five against four. Logically, there was no disadvantage. However, right at this point, Rachel's hand suddenly went numb. She lost grip on the mouse. Seeing that her champion was not moving and not being controlled, the Deputy Godfather got immediately anxious and dashed over to protect her. He ended up shielding her from an ultimate attack and was instantly killed in that attack. Rachel was shocked and her face turned pale. She had completely lost control of her fingers and recognized there was no turning back. Leave me, retreat, Rachel shouted at the team. She could only stand there to take the blows if they had to face a situation where the three of them were beaten up by four enemies, it would be a pathetic outcome. Upon hearing her instructions, Chris Scott understood. He did not even dare to look at her hand to see how she was doing, and immediately led the other two to retreat. Sweet Rachel was killed. The rest retreated to a safe distance. At this point, Chris turned and saw Rachel trying her best to grip the mouse but her hand would not cooperate. Rachel gritted her teeth. Her face had turned pale from anxiety and she was staring straight at her right hand, trying it to do what she needed. Chris suddenly felt a stinging sensation in his eyes and he turned to look at the scene on the screen. In the scene, Rachel was lying motionless on the ground. She was dead. Her death was sorrow for and at the same time, beautiful. Peach blossom petals lightly floated down to where the body was lying. In the past, he had felt like all the champions in the games looked alike. Right now, that sweet Rachel was still the sweet Rachel in the game. But Chris Scott had a strange sensation. The scene was extremely sorrowful for him. It was as though the ordinary sweet Rachel had become pretty, beautiful, and mournful. King Team. The captain told Purple Fairy, Sweet Rachel is about to resurrect. She charged this way and gave us a fright. We thought we were going to be killed, but then she stood there motionless. She is going to die. We will win this round for sure. Purple Fairy's expression was gloomy. Do not just win like this. Didn't she want to show off? Go and kill her. Kill her seven or eight times. Exhaust her. Yes. At the same time, among the audience, there was a man in full disguise with a mask and sunglasses sitting quietly by himself. His gaze fell directly on the competition arena. There was a puzzled expression in his eyes. In the last round, Rachel Alley had not leveraged on her innate qualities and instead had rather played a very conventional approach. But this round, that error, it wasn't like her. What was happening? At this point, Joshua suddenly stood up. In the gaming room, Rachel stared at her hand. Her champion in the game had resurrected but her hand could not control the mouse at all. She looked at her hand yet again. It did not respond. Her eyes turned bloodshot. She wasn't going to just settle. At this point, a warm and large hand suddenly closed over her own. At once, she heard that protective voice saying, sweet Rachel, let me. 
Rachel instantly froze. She was stunned, taken by surprise. Her heart, which had just a second ago, thumping wildly and angry at the injustice of the situation, suddenly quieted down when she heard this familiar voice. She turned around in disbelief and saw Joshua standing behind her. Strangely, for unknown reasons, she suddenly felt like a child who had been terribly wronged. Then her tears started to flow. When they had fallen short of a player at the clubhouse, she had not shed a single tear. After they had completed their first round and she had found out that her old injury had come back, she had not shed a single tear. When they had fought the first round and she had made a maneuvering error, thus losing the game, she had not shed a single tear. Even when Purple Fairy had insulted them, she had not shed a single tear. And just then, when the numbness in her hand seemed to have spread to the rest of her body, she had not shed a single tear. But now, he barely said a few words, and she was choked with emotion. Just like eight years ago. His presence alone would bring victory. She bit her lip and paused for a second. Then, she stood up and gave him her seat. He was wearing his mask, but she could see his eyes, and they were glistening in silence and wisdom. He took the seat, delaying the playing for a moment. Chris and the rest looked at him, stunned at the sudden turn of events. He did not seem to notice their excitement and only looked at the screen calmly. Now, I'll be giving directions. His deep voice was carrying that resonance so unique to him. It was an attractive voice that evoked trust. Chris snapped back to the present situation and turned to look at the screen. Then he gave a shout of surprise. The opponent has disappeared. Joshua muttered to himself and immediately figured it out. They're in the bushes trying to capture us. Chris immediately asked, do we avoid them? Without looking at him, Joshua ordered, the Godfather, lead the troops under the road. The Deputy Godfather, follow me. After saying this, sweet Rachel nimbly turned to get up and dashed out. His beautiful maneuvering dazzled Chris. For some reason, although Rachel's control of the champion was beautifully elegant, it inevitably played the role of an assassin. She would hide in the foliage or unexpectedly kill someone. But right now, Joshua Taylor's sweet Rachel, although still the same character, the vibes that Chris got was that this sweet Rachel was more of a warrior. This sweet Rachel was not in the least desolate and on contrary, had an awe-inspiring presence that was powerful and impressive. She was like a heroine, as a lady general. Without a word, he followed behind Joshua. King team. The captain spoke. They're coming. Sweet Rachel is injured and very weak. You can tell from the group battle that she was basically useless. Let's wait for them to come over and we'll kill her. One of the team members suddenly said, they're coming. The few players hiding in the bushes continued looking as the three CQ champions approached. Immediately, the captain sneered. They overestimate themselves. Three are trying to fight the five of us. We'll show them. Before he could finish speaking, sweet Rachel entered the bushes and almost without having to look, threw a stun spell. The five players hiding in the bushes were, of course, gathered together. Hence, that one stun spell knocked three of them out. Damn it! The captain was shocked and cried, Attack! However, right after Sweet Rachel executed her ultimate attack, Zombie Leader delivered another one, causing the enemy champion's HP to be reduced by half. This coordination was quick, merciless, and accurate. All at once, the five enemy champions were beaten without being given time to retaliate. And on top of this, an attack from the deputy godfather came, 
Among the five king players, the one with the lowest HP was slain immediately. The captain was nervous by now and shouted, Kill them! Episode 203, The Chase. At these words, they charged. When Rachel retreated, the captain thought that she was going to run and he immediately chased her. But after two steps, sweet Rachel suddenly turned around, charging straight at him. A slash and a flying strike. The captain's HP immediately fell until it was next to nothing. Zombie leader followed with another attack. Slade. In less than three seconds, two enemy champions had been killed. And at once, the situation was even. After the captain's champion was killed, he ordered his team members, run. When the three players finally reacted, they scrambled to get under their own defense turret. But as they reached their defense tower, Sweet Rachel and Zombie Leader had already called up. Surely they weren't going to start killing the champions under the turret. That suspicion was immediately answered as Rachel charged right in. At once, she was attacked by the defense turret. The three of them thought it was all a joke. Did she want to die? The captain couldn't help remarking. She must be making some mistakes maneuvering. She's dead meat. However, the next moment, the three champions took a step forward, thinking that if they made an attack each, it would kill her. Alas, when they took that step forward, a stunning spell. All three of them were frozen at once. Zombie leader and the deputy godfather quickly followed. Each of them executed an ultimate attack, in turn, killing off the opponents. Following this, Rachel headed out, but the defense turret made a final attack and it hit her. Surely this would kill her. Just as everyone thought she was going to die, she used a healing spell and had her HP back. The defense turret attacked her. Her HP was drained, but she did not die. The King team members were stunned. It was only then that they understood Rachel's attack just then hadn't been a maneuvering error. She had been out to kill. She was almost dead, but she had attacked them even if it was with her last breath. The captain of King Team could not help but shudder at this thought. She was fierce. She fought too fiercely. The three of them had completely wiped out King Team's players. Every movement flowed into the next. Her playing was beautiful to watch. Sweet Rachel was fearless. Even when she was in danger, she was focused on her mission to kill. This imposing matter could only be described as horrifying. CQ Fighting Team. As soon as Joshua took over, the state of affairs turned around. His understanding of the battle situation and knowledge of every champion was deep and thorough more so than Rachel's. The three of them wiped out the opponent. It was rare that Chris and the rest of the CQ team saw eye to eye with King Fighting Team on one thing. That was fierce. Joshua's style was too fierce, but it was characteristic of Robert. What are you daydreaming about? Recharge. That deep resonant voices order brought Chris and the team members back from their stunned state. All three of them were very low on HP from the fight that had just taken place. Rachel stood behind Joshua. Her right hand was still shaking uncontrollably, but her eyes were glued to Joshua's screen and fingers. That movement he had executed just then was probably to the onlooker just a graceful motion, but who could have known how quickly his fingers moved? Eight years ago, whenever they had played together, she would hear the sound of his keyboard. At that time, she used to wonder what he was like when he played. 
Now, she had finally witnessed it with her own eyes. Her gaze fell on his back. They had probably started filming already. She could tell from the fact that he had his hair done. But hadn't he said he was in Bradford, near Bloomington? So he had come here because... He must have been worried. There was no need to worry now. He was here. They wouldn't lose the game. In the second round of the match, King had initially been in the lead for having killed Sweet Rachel and the Deputy Godfather. However, under Joshua's direction, they had wiped out all five of the opponents without sacrificing any of their own remaining three. It was an obvious advantage for CQ. Joshua had never been one to slow his tempo just because he was leading in a match. Expressionlessly, he stared at his screen and started delivering his instructions in a calm voice. Zombie leader, you assist the deputy godfather. Peerless, come with me to capture someone. The godfather, protect this turret. With this wave, we can fight. Use the amplication function and surround them. Then catch up to us. In between, Chris asked. We are now low on HP, but they are full. Will we be able to fight? We'll fight. The deputy godfather can make a detour to the back and push them towards us. Zombie leader's killing attack can wait after your HP has decreased. Peerless, deploy the treatment spell for a recharge. After a group battle, there were only two players left on the opponent's end. They're thinking, do we chase them? Joshua laughed icily. Do it, one for two, it's worth it. Hence, it was another wipeout. It was just five minutes into the game and King Team had been wiped out by CQ Team twice. The commentator was absolutely excited. My God, one almost never sees this sort of lack of gold in competitions, but we are seeing it right now in this match. The veteran King Team is next to CQ Team now and they looked like junior high school students coming up against university undergraduates. They are powerless to resist. CQ was provoked repeatedly by King in the last round and this must have enraged and motivated them to rise to a level higher. This was indeed the case. The members of the King Team were all veterans, top players from various fighting teams brought together. There was no way they would have been surpassed to this extent under normal circumstances. Except that in the first round, they had targeted Rachel to the point that it had infuriated the CQ team members. On top of this, because her hand would not stop trembling, it had become a moving and tragic scene that had stirred even more the team's emotions. Now, they felt as though the energy of every cell in their body was fully focused and invested in this competition. Throughout the whole match under Joshua's direction, they made no errors. Five minutes was what it took for the opponents to be suppressed and leave them out of breath. After doing this, CQ continued to attack aggressively at an unrelenting pace, beating King Team to a pulp. Within eight minutes, the match was over. With a 20 to two headcount ratio, CQ easily bagged the victory for the second round. Almost on the verge of losing his voice, the commentator hailed them. Let's congratulate CQ team for winning the second round. Their performance was like a phoenix rising from the ashes. If King doesn't get their act together, I'm afraid they will find resisting their opponent extremely difficult. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break. The third round will be the final deciding round and it will start shortly. Let's take a look at the playback of that very exciting match. The audience broke out in enthusiastic applause. In the past, when two teams played a match, the fans of the team that won would cheer excitedly, whereas the fans of the team that lost would curse with rage, saying, isn't this just one round of the match? What's the big deal? But this time, 
all the audience, including the loyal fans of the King team, were cheering for CQ. Someone even said, My God, CQ's team's sweet Rachel is so dashing. What am I going to do? I'm going to switch allegiance. And in the competition room, they had completed another round of the game. The CQ team members were in high spirits at once. Chris turned to look at Joshua, his eyes flashing in excitement as he exclaimed, You are Robert! That series of moves. Chris gulped nervously. You are Robert, aren't you? From the first time he had fought Joshua and had been mercilessly wiped out, Chris had felt that Joshua's playing style was strangely familiar. And in the last match, Joshua had not fully manifested his moves. In this match, however, he had fully demonstrated his characteristic playing style. This was what had led Chris to the realization. It was Robert. And she was sweet Rachel. Chris's gaze shifted to Rachel. Hence, are you husband and wife? The moment he had said this, all eyes in the room instantaneously looked at Rachel and Joshua. The Godfather, the Deputy Godfather, and even Peerless exclaimed in surprise. So Mrs. Taylor is actually Coach Rachel? My God! The atmosphere in the competition room was now better than ever. Looking at their faces, Rachel grinned. But as she was grinning, a large warm hand suddenly covered her small one. She froze. Seeing Joshua holding her hand, he asked, Near hand, what happened? Rachel had a sharp sensation on the tip of her nose and immediately looked away, trying to force a smile. Nothing. Then she stuffed her trembling hand into her pocket and glared at all the team members, fiercely saying, Don't lower your guard. We still have one more round to fight and we'll have to win it before we win the competition properly. Focus on the match. I'll leave now. Having said this, Rachel turned and walked out of the gaming room. The moment she stepped out, her tears flowed uncontrollably. Her hand was still stuffed in her pocket and the trembling worsened. A sense of helplessness washed over her. There was no doubt now that CQ would clinch the champion title. She should be glad about that. But seeing how the team members were so happy, she suddenly felt lonely and helpless. Once upon a time, it had been her dream that one day she would be next to Robert in the competition arena, fighting the most perfect battle of their lives together. But now, that remained only a dream. Rachel took a deep breath and tried to suppress that painful sense of loss. Then she looked up and walked to the seats in the audience. Purple Fairy had already returned to the competition room to exert some pressure on King Team. Rachel went back to her seat and at this point saw Henry coming towards her. Rachel, did you see the match? Do you like CQ more or King? Feeling down, Rachel did not reply. And this made Henry feel down too. Everyone with eyes could see who was going to win this match. There was no suspense. If King Team could not clinch the champion title, what was the use of gifting her that team? Amidst all these difficult thoughts, the third round of the game officially commenced. Meanwhile, at the entrance of the competition venue, a rather apologetic person with a nervous expression rushed in. The guard stopped her. Hi, the competition has begun. We can't let you in now. The girl with a gaunt face said with a stubborn expression, I'm CQ's team's member, Ancestor White Bones. I wish to enter to play in the competition. The Godfather and the Deputy Godfather were still nursing their injuries. Even if Rachel had been able to play, they would still be short of players. She had expended great efforts to escape from home. 
The guard at the door paused and said, I'm sorry, are you able to prove your identity? Ancestor White Bones shook her head. She had escaped with only $10 to pay for her transport. She didn't even have her cell phone with her. And at this point, a cab pulled up sharply next to her. A middle-aged woman came charging out of the vehicle. Well done, you. You dare to run away. Episode 204, A Moment of Pride. There was no doubt about the third round of the game. Joshua continued to be very much in his element and played extremely aggressively right from the start. Within 10 minutes, the match came to an end. All the audience stood up and gave CQ a round of wild applause. The commentator was, of course, emotional and worked up. CQ fighting team has made a real achievement and it is now our deserving champion. And thus ended the Washington, D.C. competition. In the final round of the competition, the relatively unknown CQ team had made a big name for themselves with a sensational win. The competition had been broadcasted live, and in the blink of an eye, it caused a tidal wave in the gaming world. Rachel's Sweet Rachel and Joshua's Sweet Rachel had been played completely different and were now widely imitated. The fans of the CQ team grew overnight to become the biggest fandom among all competitive teams' fandoms. All around, there was wild applause. Rachel stared at the crowd before her. She bit her lip, her gaze falling on the gaming room. It was a considerable distance away, and she could not see their faces clearly. But she could see that all the team members were joyous. They were shrieking excitedly and jumping around. There was one silhouette that sat calmly amidst the wild celebrations. Although she could not see what he was doing, she felt his gaze through the glass window, making its way among the sea of people in search of her, looking at her. At that moment, she felt her heart burst with pride for her team. She placed her hand behind her and suddenly broke into a grin. It was all right. Even if she could never play again, it was all right. CQ team had won. She had won. She took another deep breath. Shortly following this was the award ceremony. But before that, there was a 10 minute break to spruce up the stage. Rachel sat back in her seat. Suddenly, she heard voices in a heated argument coming from the entrance of the competition venue. Even with the background noise of the audience stirring, her ears were sensitive enough to pick up Ancestor Whitebones' voice. She narrowed her eyes and quickly made her way to the entrance. Henry, too, followed her. Rachel, where are you going? He was in a foul mood. King Team had lost and in a pathetic way. It didn't look good at all. Now, what was he going to gift to Rachel? Rachel had no idea of the difficulties he was facing and had already dashed to the entrance. After seeing what the situation was, her expression darkened at once. Ancestor White Bones was hanging on with her life to the stone sculpture next to the entrance, and that middle-aged woman was pulling her hair. You're coming home with me. I'm telling you to come home with me. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Ancestor White Bones stubbornly stood there, silent as usual, but absolutely stubborn. She said, Mom, I'm pleading with you. Let me take part in the final game of the competition. And after that, I'll do whatever you say. I'll leave the team. I'll go home and make money for my brother. Ancestor White Bones' mother spat. If you play in the competition, they will make me forfeit the money. You are coming with me right now. Mom, please. No way. All you know is how to play games and it's not proper work. Ancestor White Bones grabbed tightly onto the stone sculpture and refused to budge. Exasperated, her mother raised her hand and gave her a vicious slap across her face. 
Are you coming or not? Ancestor White Bones bit her lip. I'm not going. Bam. Get another tight slap. Coming or not? Ancestor White Bones' mouth was bleeding now. Not going. Then I'll beat you to death, you big liability. Bam. 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 One slap after another landed on Ancestor Whitebones' back as she turned pale from the beating. By the time Rachel rushed out, Ancestor Whitebones' cheeks were already badly swollen from the beating. But she clenched her teeth, refusing to say a word. The big screen outside the competition venue had a projection delay of about two minutes. Hence, when Rachel walked out, the big screen was showing that CQ team had clinched the champion title. Ancestor Whitebones was stunned. Immediately, she broke into a grin. They won. Their team won. Ancestor Whitebones suddenly released her grip on the stone sculpture. Her mother was not prepared for this situation and was stunned too. Ancestor Whitebone stood upright and suddenly jumped up with joy. Mom, our team won. Her mother was so surprised she was speechless. Ancestor Whitebones laughed with tears streaming down her cheeks. They won. They no longer need me. After saying this, she dried her eyes against her sleeve. Mom, I'll come home with you. Her mother smiled when she heard this. That's right. You're ruining your own future. Don't blame your mother for being harsh with you. What can you gain from gaming? What future is there? Come home with me, and after you've made some money for your brother's wedding, I'll find you a rich... She grabbed Ancestor Whitebones' arm and was about to lead her into the car. Rachel called out, White Bones! Ancestor White Bones halted and turned around sharply. As she looked at Rachel, she smiled and said, Coach, we've won! Rachel's eyes turned red and stinging. She nodded. Yes, we've won! Ancestor White Bones laughed. Rachel drew in a deep breath. She understood Ancestor White Bones' family situation. She wanted to intervene, but Ancestor White Bones' mother was right in one thing. There was no future in gaming, because the golden period for a gamer was before one turned 25. After one turned 25, one's reflexes and ability to react would not be as strong as before. And they had established the club not for survival, but for dreams and aspirations. She could not expect Ancestor Whitebones to give up five years of her youth just to chase a dream. Everyone had their own choices to make in life. She looked at Ancestor Whitebones and finally said, CQ team will always need you. Ancestor Whitebones froze and bit her lip. She nodded to show she understood. She then quickly turned away and looked down drying her tears. She suddenly turned around and looked at Rachel again. Coach, I'll be back. Wait for me. Okay. After these words, Ancestor Whitebones' mother gave Rachel a fierce glare and told her, I'm telling you, don't tempt my daughter to play games. We are an ordinary family. We can't afford it. Grabbing Ancestor White Bones, she got them both into the cab. As the cab started to drive away, the window rolled down. Ancestor White Bones took out her hand and gave Rachel thumbs up. As she watched the cab drive off, merge and disappear into the sea of traffic, becoming one of those nondescript vehicles on the road, she wondered why her heart felt like it was being squeezed by a pair of invisible, giant hands. Did she wonder how many youths, for the sake of chasing their own dreams, had in the end crumbled and fallen in the face of reality? She believed that White Bones could not bow to circumstances. She would be back. 
At this point, she suddenly heard a voice coming from behind. Mr. Sun. Rachel paused and turned around. She saw Purple Fairy dashing out. Because she had lost the game, she was anxious and had not noticed Rachel standing nearby. She immediately went up to Henry, saying, Mr. Carter, this was a slip-up, and even if we lose the competition, we can wait for the next season. Henry frowned as soon as she spoke. Of course, King Team could wait for next season's competition, but his intentions to present a gift for Rachel today had been thwarted. There was a big difference between gifting a champion team and gifting a runner-up. Henry glanced at Rachel and sighed. Since they had come to this point in time, the gift still had to be presented. Hence, he immediately looked at Rachel. Rachel, I'm giving you a big present today. Rachel was already stunned. From what Purple Fairy had just said to Henry, her pupils shrank as she turned sharply to look at Henry. It was you who established King Team? Seeing her surprised expression, he said rather proudly, yes, it was me. Didn't you want to establish a team years ago? You even told me that it was your dream. So I established such a team. He stopped, scratched his head and said sheeplessly, initially I was expecting them to secure the champion title and then give you the team as a present. But it seems like CQ team was a tad aggressive today. But if you want, you can guide them. Rachel and Purple Fairy were stunned by what he was saying. The latter had only realized then that Rachel was standing nearby. But the meaning behind what Henry was saying, the reason he established King Team was that he wanted to give the team to Emma? Surely he couldn't be doing this. If from the very start, his reason for establishing the club was to gift it to Emma, why had he, she done all these things? She was flabbergasted. Rachel, too, stared at Henry in disbelief. She thought of how Purple Fairy had been spending his money without restraint. She remembered the time she had even wanted to buy the villa because of what Purple Fairy was doing, how she had thought in her heart that the investor was such a complete fool. Then she looked at this complete fool standing before her right now. Rachel was absolutely speechless especially when Henry thought that the look on her face was because of how moved she was. Hence, he said a little shyly, Rachel, you don't have to feel embarrassed. We have been good friends since a very young age. There is no need to feel shy about accepting the team. Besides, I... Stop. Rachel didn't know whether to laugh or cry. She had wanted so badly for the team to come in first. But time and time again, they had been held back by Purple Fairy's unsculptureless ways. It was hard not to hate her. But now, she realized that the money this person had been spending to stir up all this havoc came from Henry. Rachel had never been so mad at Henry, especially how Purple Fairy's interference had called Ancestor Whitebones to be found by her family. And as a result, she had missed her opportunity to play in the grand finals. Rachel wished she could throw Henry a few hard punches. And this fool. Was he some sort of curse meant to ruin her? She was heaving with anger now. And still, Henry continued. Hey, why are you so worked up? Don't be so worked up. It's only a team. Rachel glared at him. She was completely speechless. At this point, Chris ran up to her. Coach Rachel, hurry up. It's our turn to receive the award. When Rachel heard this, she turned around, extending her hand in both helplessness and fury and tapped Henry on his chest. You. I'll have to give it to you. Then she turned and strode back to the award ceremony. 
Henry stood there staring blankly, not quite understanding the situation. He turned and looked at Purple Fairy. Was that reaction from Rachel too happy? But how was it that she looked angry? That shouldn't be the case. And how did Chris address her? Episode 205, A Gift from a Friend. Purple Fairy did not say a word. She widened her eyes, finding it hard to believe what was going on. Rachel was the famous Sweet Rachel, and she was currently the female esports caster Emma. Didn't Henry know all that? What the hell? She grimaced feeling the next thing that she needed to do was to hand in her letter of resignation. At the menu, Rachel had returned to the auditorium. The host was speaking on stage, narrating the hardships that CQ had faced during their journey to where they are now. His touching words made all the fans tear. Led by Chris, Rachel walked down the side of the auditorium and stood waiting by the stage to receive the award. At that moment, Joshua was there too. Although his face was covered by his mask and sunglasses, his tall and striking frame still attracted much attention. The moment Rachel walked up, his gaze was fixed on her. She looked back at him. After a moment, she smiled. Joshua's expression, however, was dark, and hidden in depth. His gaze fell on her hand, which was stuffed into her pocket. He could see that it was still trembling uncontrollably. Joshua felt as though something heavy was crushing his chest, making it hard for him to breathe, and to that stabbing pain in his heart. His thoughts went back to eight years ago. The team had been established. He just had to wait for them to turn up during the holidays so that they could train together and take part in the competition. Suddenly, a call from her. She said she wanted out. At that point, he had been truly upset with her. Although eventually he felt that her withdrawal was not out of choice. After all, having to withstand pressures from one's parents to continue gaming was not something that everyone could do. Like himself, hadn't he been kicked out of the family by his father for the same reason? Hence, all these years, even though he had learned to let things go and not take things too seriously. Regrets remained nevertheless over the fact that sweet Rachel had not made good on her word at the time. Until this moment, this day, He finally understood that it was because she was injured. His sweet Rachel had injured her hand and could no longer play games, and he had been unaware of it, or when it had happened. When she had called him at that time, she must have been sad and devastated, while he, on the other hand, had waited impatiently for an explanation that didn't come quite as immediately as he expected. Before he hung up on her, What she would have needed the most at that time would have been having him by her side, supporting her. And then a scene flashed in his memory suddenly. An 18-year-old girl hugging her knees and crying quietly in a corner. That devastation and desolation. All he wanted to do was hold her in his embrace and tell her it was all right. At this point, The host on stage was starting to make the announcement. And now, let us invite the members of the CQ team to come up on stage and receive their award. After these words were spoken, Chris, the Godfather, the Deputy Godfather, and Lonely Peerless walked up to the stage. Rachel stood on the spot for a moment, but she saw that the four men on stage had suddenly turned to look at her. Because of Joshua's identity, he was unable to appear before the camera. 
But that wasn't the case with Rachel. It was a moment of great honor, and the team wanted Rachel to share this moment with them. She could read this from the expression on their faces. Rachel's lips curled upwards in a smile. She strode up to the stage. By then, Henry and Purple Fairy had returned to the auditorium. Henry's jaw dropped open with surprise the moment he saw Rachel on stage receiving the award. He froze on the spot. The five of them stood on the stage. Because Zombie Leader was known as the captain, the host zoomed in on him. Zombie Leader, perhaps you could share with us how you feel right now. Chris said, touched, excited. Well, just very happy. The host hiccuped and laughed. He continued, Can you tell us then, whose contribution to the game do you think was the most important in this competition? Whose contribution to the game was most important? Of course, it was Joshua's. If Joshua hadn't turned up, if it hadn't been for Joshua eventually leading the team, they might not have been able to win. But as this thought entered his mind, he looked at Rachel. Rachel paused momentarily, and then she heard Chris say, I feel that throughout the competition, all five of us contributed well to the game. As for who was most important, I wish to say that everyone has been extremely important. We couldn't have done without any one of the five of us. But if you were to ask which of us is the core member of the team, then that would be our coach, Rachel. The host followed Chris's gaze and looked towards Rachel. Chris continued, if it weren't for coach Rachel, we wouldn't be here today. When the Godfather, the deputy Godfather and Peerless heard this, they agreed in unison. That's right. Coast Rachel is the core member of our team. She's the most important. The four men were speaking all at once, their deep, strong voices filling the auditorium through the microphone. Silence. The air in the venues seemed to have frozen. After a moment, the host applauded. Another moment passed. The crowd below broke into a thunderous applause. The award ceremony ended. Rachel walked down the stage. She looked at the trophy in her hand and felt her eyes tearing up. Chris and the Godfather, as well as the Deputy Godfather, stood on the side, smiling at her. The silly grin on their faces was heartwarming. The four men surrounded her as she walked down the stage. Her gaze rubbed over to the dark corner where Joshua had been standing before she had gone up the stage. But now, he had disappeared. Strange, she felt some kind of void in her heart. Had he gone away again? Ever since she had realized he was Robert, he had been avoiding her. Perhaps he didn't quite know how to explain to her what happened eight years ago. Was that why he was avoiding her? She bit her lip. At this point, she felt someone grab her wrist. Rachel turned around. It was Henry, standing behind her and staring at her in disbelief. Rachel, Rachel, you, you are CQ's team's coach? Staring at him, she pursed her lips and nodded. Henry still had that look of disbelief. But, but, but he really had had no idea. If he had known, he would have never allowed Purple Fairy to do such horrible things. Right there and then, Henry felt truly regretful. So regretful that his insides could have turned a sickly green. Looking at Rachel, he suddenly grabbed her hand. Come with me. His movement was unexpectedly quick and strong, inadvertently pushing her to the corridor on the side. Everyone was getting ready to leave the auditorium, and there was no 
one elsewhere they were at at the moment. Henry looked at her saying, Rachel, I remember you once said you wanted your own team. Where you are now with CQ, there are investors pressuring. I'm sure you're uncomfortable. Why not come over to King Team? I guarantee you the team will be all yours. Upon hearing this, Rachel immediately shook her head in rejection. There is no need. Then she turned to walk away. However, Henry tugged at her. Rachel, why not? I promise I will not interfere. Furthermore, I will transfer the team to you. Rachel frowned. One doesn't deserve a reward for not having done any work. Why should I take anything from you? Henry continued to look at her. Because whatever belongs to me, it belongs to you. Why should we draw such clear lines between us? Why not? Still looking at her. Why are you so serious now? How much is the team worth? Before he could even finish his sentence, he saw that Rachel's expression had clouded over. In an icy tone, she said, First, to the Rachel you knew long ago, the team indeed would not be worth much. But today, this Rachel does not have that sort of money. Henry immediately realized what he had said and that his words had probably hurt her. He immediately said, Rachel, I didn't mean that. I... Secondly, if you gave me the team, what do I have in return for you? I don't need anything in return. I never wanted anything from you. Henry quickly swore. Rachel shook her head. But you must have a reason for gifting me something. Henry's lips went dry with nervousness. I... I only want to be good to you. I want to make you happy. And I don't wish you to suffer hardships. It was simple and straightforward. Rachel was stunned by his words. She reflected on these words for a while and she finally understood what they meant. She paused for a bit. Henry, is this because you like me? Such an awkward and narcissistic remark. If she had said this in the past, Henry would have given her an arrogant look. But right now, he held a troubled expression for a moment and said, Yes, I like you. As he had said that, he quickly added before Rachel could interrupt him, Please don't misunderstand. I have never thought of demanding anything from you. I only remember that you were Allie's family's pampered little mistress and you would get whatever you desired. In Tampa, you lived like a princess. But today, you have to bend to other people and even be subservient. And I felt bad for you. Rachel's heart softened when he said these words. But he had only seen her hardships as a reporter. He didn't understand that being subservient, being subordinate, was just a part and parcel of ordinary life. Unconsciously, her tone softened. Henry, one does things according to their status. I am now a person with nothing, and so I have to start from scratch. I don't think I'm suffering hardships, but I thank you for your good intentions. Henry sighed to hear her say those words. I don't understand the camaraderie you have in your team, but I saw you with them just then. Is it because you have a close relationship with them that you are reluctant to leave? Then how about you give your team's boss's number? I will buy it from him at a high price. Then I'll gift you the club and let you have the absolute say. How about that? Rachel shook her head. There is no need for you to do this. However, Henry took a step towards her and held her hand. Rachel, eight years ago when your family was in trouble, I was overseas on a holiday. I wasn't there to help you. Let me help you now. Rachel was about to speak when a familiar deep voice suddenly came from not too far away. There's no need. Rachel and Henry froze and turned around sharply. They saw Joshua standing quietly on the side. They had no idea how long he had been there.
That's it for today, guys. So if you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.